Uh, okay, um, I've had a, um, uh, a sort of an over uh, look at things um, regarding uh, the Earthship concept and uh, and all of our little uh, videos we're doing on cancer and the parallels and all of that and that keeps gelling and in my head and uh, spewing out my mouth uh, so this is just more of that but you know this is a this is definitely an adventure because uh, uh, this just keeps it keeps on happening of course um, so I got a topic here of three three things in our civilization our society our uh, humanity here garbage shit which you know you can call sewage as well garbage shit and cancer now these are three things that pretty much involve humanity on this planet i mean animals do get cancer um, animals and plants don't make garbage and they do have shit and it does go away but it's how it's how humans deal with these things and uh, I just saw well one thing I saw just the other day was that my work my life my life is my work um, and now that involves cancer um, is really fueled by garbage shit and cancer my current life is fueled by garbage shit and cancer and you know that's laughable uh, so uh, but I've always you know for for many years have said garbage and shit are my favorite subjects because I want them um, and nobody else does well, I'm not going to go as far as to say I want cancer yet but uh, I have definitely already benefited from my encounter with cancer at this point and I'm say six months in um, to the cancer experience, let's say. You know, you might be seeing me six months from now sobbing in tears uh, uh, on morphine and, uh, and wanting to die. But uh, at, at this point, that's not the case. Uh, I, I am looking at it as an adventure, but I've looked at garbage as an adventure and I've looked at shit as an adventure and it's working. So there are these parallels there. But let's just take, like, let's say garbage first and uh, Garbage is, uh, we humans invented garbage. Uh, you know, and I, in my 20s, looked around and saw garbage. And, well, I, I have to take back uh, that back a step. Um, I was raised by a man who never threw anything away. He saved bottle caps. He saved mayonnaise jars. He saved tuna cans. He saved stuff. The only thing is he, he he didn't know he didn't figure out what to do with it with it he he, he kept nails and miscellaneous screws in mayonnaise jars and stuff like that but he he didn't know what to do with it but he always said that's too good to throw away and you know that did influence me and I find myself I come out to New Mexico and uh, I'm trying to build a home for myself and start a life I didn't really even care about a profession I just was glad to be out here where there's big sky, big mountains, big desert, uh, you know, you, you, it's just amazing to be out here. And I didn't have much money and didn't care about much money. And so I started building myself a home out of an old railroad tie barn. I moved in it and started remodeling it and fixing it up. And <coughs> I ended up, you know, using beer cans and bottles and I ended up actually making buildings out of to, to sell uh, for clients and, and out of beer cans and bottles and tires. And, you know, the whole story goes into, leads into earthships and all that. But my point is, I got into garbage. And garbage is something that is a natural resource of this planet. Um, we, and, and the commonality between it and shit and cancer is nobody wants garbage. Nobody wants shit. Nobody wants cancer. I want garbage, so I want garbage, and so I start collecting garbage, and I just, I, I'm, I'm, I live that way. I, I, I recently did a new solar 
uh, power system at my house and uh, my airship, my first airship. And uh, a guy was helping me do it. And, you know, I've got, I'm, I'm okay. I can buy hinges. I can buy whatever I need to buy, you know, within reason. I'm not poor. Um, I'm not a billionaire either. But uh, what I'm saying is I can afford to go to the store and buy a pair of hinges. But instead, and my time is valuable. I charge clients a lot of money for my time to do something. Uh, I give away a lot of my time too. But I went around with this guy who I was paying on the property that uh, my house is on where we're doing this solar system. And we found old things that I had torn off of old buildings. And you know, my it's four and a half acres, so it's got a lot of stuff on it, in addition to a great apple orchard. And we're turning over old cabinets and doors and things and rooting around trying to find hinges. You know, and I could go to the store and buy a pair of hinges for $3 and we spend here a half an hour, two of us. But it was fun and it felt right to, rather than let these hinges sit here and rust into the ground and get taken to the dump, we, we scavenged around and got hinges. And we did it two or three times because there's two or three sets of hinges on this thing. And, you know, that's the way I live. That's the way I, I see it. I see, I don't want to contribute to garbage because garbage is, is something that we stack up and bury and don't know what to do with. Garbage is a, 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 a serious dilemma on this planet. And I am finding myself not wanting to participate in that dilemma, just for logical reasons, but also seeing an amazing, an amazing possibility here that, you know, a leaf is dropped from a tree. A tree drops its leaf on the ground. The tree takes nutrients from the ground with its roots and it drops a leaf on the ground to put nutrients back in that ground. So it's a cycle. You know, people talk sustainability and recycling and everything and they, you, you, we really know, I don't see very many people that really live this thought. We should be like trees. We should be doing that. We should, everything that we discard should have a secondary use. I wanted to do that in this community and we're doing it. We, we in this community on 640 acres and 130 homes, uh, we are recycling our cans and bottles and tires and plastic and stuff, but it's nowhere near the level that I wanted. But I find myself dealing with subdivision law and HOAs and, you know, I had to, they, those, those diseases uh, attacked our community as soon as I got it started. And I'm still reeling from that crap. You know, you, if your mailbox is uh, two inches too tall, they want to saw it down with a chainsaw. I mean, it's, it's insane with this HOA thing. So, but what I'm saying is I still do not have what I want fully on, on this planet. I do have a sustainable community, a subdivision going, but uh, I don't have fully everything working the way I want it and I better do it soon. I've got, I'm 75 and I've got uh, stage four cancer. Um, but we'll get to that. But garbage is something nobody wants. I want it. I want every drop of garbage. I want to bring it back and use it in my life. That is a cycle. That is a logical cycle. That is beyond recycling. That is beyond sustainability. That is beyond ecology. That is logic. The tree has this logic. Why don't we? And so I'm after that logic. Uh, and I see garbage as similar to shit and cancer, nobody wants it. Uh, and, and I'm seeing, I'm about, you know, I'm, I'm calling it alchemy. I'm wanting to turn garbage into gold. And I am, I'm building houses out of it. But I want so much more. I want every single piece of garbage. And it does, we invented the word garbage, see? I want every single piece of that stuff to go back into the lives of humanity to be reused and used and and uh, cut up and melted down and whatever. You know, a leaf gets broken down into dirt and it becomes nutrients for the next tree. Garbage is that way.
and it has a similarity to shit and it has a similarity to cancer. Now, on the topic of shit, uh, you know, shit is my word for uh, uh, sewage. You know, your, your sewage, your gray water, your black water, uh, it's the same thing. We, as humans, want it to go away. Make it go away, you know, uh, everybody shits, you know, I don't care. Um, Donald Trump shits, Aristotle Onassis shitted, uh, everybody shits. Uh, but if we all want it to go away. Well, believe me, I have dealt with shit so much with all my solar toilet experiments and gray water and, and compost toilets and shit fryers and, um, I mean, but I, I've dealt with shit. And I don't want it to go away. I want it because what I, my outcome after 50 years of dealing with shit, yeah, hell, I went to Earthship Island in Indonesia. We took 100 people with us to develop it. And the first thing we had to deal with was the shit of 100 people. I mean, and we turned it into trees. We turned it into, we called them soil plugs. And, and I know how to do this now and I could do it a lot better the next time around. But the Earthship itself deals with shit. It takes it and uses it to grow food. Get into the Earthship Academy, Online Academy, or the Real Academy, or our books, or whatever, our website. You can get into the details of what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the concepts now. So shit is just like garbage. Nobody wants it. They, they want it to go away. And I am, I'm seeing shit as gold. I mean, there's plants right out here in this greenhouse beside me. They are grown from the sewage of this home, from the gray water, and then we'll go out to the anaerobic processor with the black water, and the affluent coming off of that will turn go into rubber line planters that we grow food in. So we're talking about uh, shit being gold. We're talking about a use for it, a logical use. And here's the key thing with both garbage and shit. Yeah, we got waste management collecting all your garbage, and we've got uh, sewage treatment plants collecting all of our shit. It's, those days are, are going away. Every home, every building needs to deal with its own garbage and its own shit. They, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at not needing an infrastructure and a company, waste management, our politicians to deal with our municipality, to deal with our, our shit and our garbage. We, we want to learn to deal with it as a, a logical thing of dealing with it ourselves. Like our town of Taos here goes in and out of having a recycling center and not and they take it in, but nobody can make a money off make money off of a recycling center, and so they go under. and And the sewage treatment plants all over the place they do a mediocre job of treating sewage with chemicals, and then put that in the rivers or the streams. I mean, it's not dealt with right anyway. But there is a logical way to consume garbage. There is a logical way for us to consume our gray and black water, our shit. And this is another. This is alchemy, and. This is what we're looking at with the Earthship concept. And you mix cancer into that now, and you have, look at cancer. I see it very similar to garbage and shit. Nobody wants cancer. What is cancer? Nobody even knows that. But I do have some, some concepts, some logic on it after being in the cancer game for six months. Um, cancer, is seeds of cancer are there all the time. It's, it's out there. It's like in the universe, or it's in our, our universe as humans and animals too. Um, and probably even plants, but um, seeds of cancer are there. It's what we do, whether we nourish those seeds or we starve those seeds. It's kind of a thing like that. Cancer is basically the default. In other words, like a way to look at this default thing is look at darkness and look at light. We know how to make light, light bulbs, candles, whatever. We don't know how to make darkness. Have you ever thought about trying to make darkness? 
We can make light. But if we don't make light, darkness is the default. So we need to make light, otherwise we're consumed by darkness. I see cancer the same way. Uh, we need to make, figuratively speaking, light with our bodies, with our world. We need to eat the right things to make our body make light, make health, as opposed to eating the foods that make darkness, disease, that allow disease. Darkness, disease, is the default when we're not making light with our bodies. And cancer is that default. So, you know, I've had a lot of talks here and I'll probably have more on, on uh, the food that we eat uh, can either uh, make cancer happy or make or, or not make cancer happy. So I'm I'm learning I'm learning to to starve cancer of the things it likes and to hit it with the things it doesn't like. And and if I don't and normally in normal everyday life I didn't I I I uh, didn't make light with my body. I I didn't make enough light, so darkness, disease, was able to grow. And you know, now I'm, I'm telling you, you ne there was never a person on this planet that loved bacon as much as me. I look at bacon as poison now. Now, you know, a lot of people that don't have cancer, I've said this before, a lot of people that don't have cancer, they can eat a steak or a, or a slice of bacon here and there and not, not you know, go to hell, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I didn't eat a slice of bacon. I mean, I had days where I had bacon three times a day. Uh, I mean, I, I loved it. But now I look at it, I see it, it's poison. They, and it's weird how, how, how it's not anybody's fault, but bacon and, and eggs and, and milk and steaks and, and meat have been made to taste so good that you know you can take something really pretty much evil and make it be so much fun that people will do it and kill themselves. And so that's what I'm saying. That's, that's the, those are the seeds really of cancer. Cancer is the default. Like darkness is the default of not having light. Cancer is the default of not having your bodies make high energy light food. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, high energy from light plant-based food. Uh, and so the, the, the similarities are there in that we don't want garbage, we don't want shit, and we don't want cancer. But you gotta look into them. There's a science to logically recycling, and recycling's a pretty lame word, reincorporating, reusing, harvesting, whatever. There's a science to reincorporating garbage into our lives. There's a science to reincorporating shit into our lives. And there's a science of making cancer, it's a part of our lives. It's how we handle it. Shit's a part of our lives, but we can make it go away. Well, here's the thing. Cancer's a part of our lives, but we can't make it go away, you know? And, and we really are fooling ourselves that we're making shit go away. And we're really fooling ourselves that we're making garbage go away because uh, we aren't. We're just burying garbage and burying shit. So, uh, you know, it's not, it's not really uh, the truth that we are dealing with garbage. We're, we're burying it. It's not the truth that we're dealing with shit. We're mixing it up with chemicals and putting it back into our rivers, collecting it all in one spot. And it's a myth that, we're that we think we're dealing with cancer. We think we're dealing with cancer. You know, we're, we're literally, from all the research that I have seen in six months, and that's not very long because other people have devoted their whole lives to cancer, but uh, to research on cancer. But we are killing our bodies to kill the cancer. That's, that's what I'm seeing. All of the research out there, all of the pills, the $11,000 a bottle pills that you have to take one bottle every month, the shots, the chemo, the operations, the cut, the slicing and dicing. Every one of these things is basically a step toward death. It's not, it's just, it's, it's 
Yes, some of them will eliminate cancer for the time being, but it's so, it's such a default setting that it comes back, you know, the minute you, you, you cut everything out and you left one cell, it comes back. So I have not seen any good language out there saying chemo is great, saying uh, the drugs are great, uh, the cutting out of cancer, the cutting off of breasts, the cutting off of balls, oh, it's great. But I have heard a lot of people say and seen it in books and, and writings and papers, this diet of not eating any animal products at all is great. And I'll have to say, maybe I'll eat my words, speaking of eating, uh, but right now, I'm pro I, I, I would say starting in January of 2020, I took a knob that was on full blast animal products, bacon three times a day, steaks, butter. I used to eat butter in a tablespoonful. I mean, cheese piled up six inches high on a salad, different kinds of cheese. I would say I've taken the volume on animal products and turned it down, started turning it down in January, and it was pretty much down uh, about six weeks ago, and it's off. It is off now. I'd say it's been off over a month. So I toned it, I started toning it down, and it has been off. And I, I have to say that I don't remember feeling this good any time in the last decade. So there's something to be said about that. Uh, in my head, in my body, uh, and of course I'm putting a couple of other things with it. Uh, they, there's, there's not just the diet, but there is exercise. I've always gotten exercise. I pound tires. That's probably what's kept me alive. But I religiously get exercise now. I religiously, every day, I, I stop business bullshit, which takes a lot of to run this earthship situation. I stop that at noonish and physically work the rest of the day somehow pounding tires doing any kind of physical work movement up and down you know pounding aerobic whatever i do it and you know i tell the bankers the lawyers the staff the crew the business managers the clients everybody bye bye i'm going to do therapy and you can take it or leave it and it's the same with stress part of that they're coupled together there Obviously, when I'm pounding tires or working on a roof or building or laying flagstone or whatever, I'm thinking right then of, of that thing. It puts my mind right there, right then, which means I'm not fretting and stressing about making payroll, dealing with a lawsuit, dealing with an asinine building code official or whatever, um, or, a, or a crippled client. Uh, by crippled, I mean emotionally. Um, so what I'm saying is, so fortunately, uh, I don't do too many clients these days, uh, but I do, I, I, you know, we, I need to do every kind of thing I can. But, um, the thing is, uh, it's diet and it's exercise and it's elimination of stress. And those, uh, it, it, cancer is the default. If you, if you don't have this great whole food plant-based diet in your life, and if you don't, and if you have a lot of stress, and if you don't get exercise, which is the case with most people, that's the way it is with a typical business person. They eat a lot of steaks, they drink a lot of booze, eat a lot of steaks, have tremendous amounts of stress, and get no exercise. Some of them take time off to play handball or something, but, uh, and what they're doing is dying. And then, of course, when they start dying, here comes the pharmaceuticals and the slice and dice people, and they make your life maybe not last any longer than if you did nothing, but they make you miserable for those last years. <laughs> so what I'm saying is uh, there is no wrong to this plant-based, whole food plant-based diet, and cancer does exist, and shit does exist, and garbage does exist. I am incorporating them into my life, and... I think there's some potential there. See you later.